there's something in the water down there and that look that looks like hippo well we're definitely gonna go and have a look hello and welcome to the sim hangar my name's mark Asobo have just released their top rudder solo 103 microlite and today we're going to take it for a spin in vr i'm using the hewlett packard reverb g1 let's now go and take a look at what was in the water could have been elephant but it certainly looked like hippo let's take a closer look yep that's definitely hippo in the water that's amazing and that's quite a big pot of them as well in the real world of course being this close they'd be charging out of the water whilst we test out the top rudder solo 103 we're in africa botswana to be exact and we're in the okavango delta I've actually been there on a number of occasions and it's one of the most beautiful and interesting places on earth. Today we'll just be flying around Guma. In the future I'll certainly be doing more videos on the Okavango. It's from Simworks Studios and is available on the FlatSim Marketplace. Highly recommended. Let me get right to the point. My best ever VR experience, the one that was most believable, was in Thrundra Design's DHC2 Beaver in X-Plane. Well, that was until today. Being in VR in the top rudder solo is just absolutely amazing. VR in this aircraft absolutely conveys the feeling of height, of speed, of total immersion and complete believability. In a word, it's fantastic. If you suffer from vertigo, look away now. Having not flown regularly for something like 25 years, and then only in the smaller GA aircraft, in terms of reviewing flight models, I'm often left to surmise or estimate, like most of us do, what we would expect for the flight model. But I am fortunate that I have done flying in microlights. This particular one is a little more sophisticated than what I'm used to. My microlights were more a hang glider with an engine strapped on. But nonetheless, it was an enjoyable, if accident prone, period of my life. But I think that the flight model here in the Top Rudder Solo 103 is absolutely excellent. It is behaving exactly as I would expect it to. If I had any criticism, well, maybe it's not really twitchy enough. But then again, I haven't set up my sensitivities, which I'll need to do. My experience is enhanced by having this Okavango scenery. From memory, it's fairly accurate. There would be more diversity in trees and a little bit more brown colouring, but other than that, it's looking very good. Time for a little touch and go. This aircraft can land just about anywhere, and careful you don't sneeze, otherwise you'll take off again. Not a very good landing, but we'll have to try that again just now. There's a clearing ahead, so let's try another touch and go, and hopefully this time a little bit more successful. I can feel the yaw as I apply the rudder. The prop disengages from the engine when the RPM falls below 2500. Takes some getting used to. If the engine sounds a little bit like an overgrown lawnmower, well, that's just as it should be. She has a tendency, once you apply throttle, to stick her nose in the air, and you need to control that to maintain a realistic airspeed. There's something ahead there. Let's go take a look. I think it's elephant.
there is no noticeable impact on performance using this aircraft, or for that matter with this scenery. Not only am I flying in VR, but I'm recording at the same time, and in addition, I'm also recording a replay so I can capture moments in 2D for external views. And whilst I acknowledge the playback may be a little jerky in places, that's an impact of the recording and not the experience in sim. It's silky smooth. I'm using the very latest NVIDIA drivers, as at end of April 2021. The scenery, by the way, is populated with 12,000 animals. Obviously elephant, giraffe, impala, buffalo, crocs, hippos, and so on. As you would expect, there's not a lot of instrumentation in the cockpit, just the bare necessity, with the RPM indicator being perhaps the most important thing to watch, along with your airspeed. Perfectly readable in the G1. The quality of the texturing and modeling on the top rudder Solo 103 is excellent and up to a Sobo's normal high standards. We've just gained a little bit of height so we can test a few maneuvers. I'm not going to go through the intricacies of how to fly this aircraft. One of the joys of an aircraft such as this is learning and experimenting by yourself how to fly it. This is definitely not recommended in the real world in a microlight. Don't try this at home. I'm quite relieved I didn't bring a packed lunch with me. The Okavango scenery package comes with nine custom airstrips, six camps and two bush trips. So for a price of around £20, you're getting some fairly good value for money. The only concern I really have is I'm not totally sure if this amount of fun is legal. We're now approaching the medical camp, offering help and assistance to both animals and humans. Now oh, I see they've got a raised helipad. Interesting. I wonder if a touch and go on there is even possible. Oh, and there's some elephants too. If you like it low and slow, then this could well be the aircraft for you. Goes without saying, it's fantastic for VFR and for VR. This experience gets my highest recommendation. Thank you very much for joining me today. Is the top rudder Solo 103 something you're considering? Let me know in the notes below. See you again very soon. Look after yourselves and...
Bye-bye for now.